Welcome back, everyone, to another match, another expedition match of Zero K. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we're going to have a match between Fieldtoss and RAR on Adansonia. Fieldtoss going for the Amphib Factory, and RAR going for the Amphib Factory as well. And I heard mention of a new strategy. Still Blue was mentioning something about there being a strategy that RAR was trying out that might help them out here. Not sure what it is. Considering what the Amp Factory has, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a bit more of an archer focus, but we've seen archers do well, and, I mean, that's kind of known. That's part of the meta now. So I don't know if that's going to be it, or if they have something even better in mind. Maybe using Jin or using the Lobster. Both of those units are great for transporting other units around, but we don't see much use of them. Or I haven't recently. Granted, I also haven't had a chance to see a lot of Amphib games recently, so it might very well be the case that it's been used, but... As far as I know, it's not really part of the meta. So if that's a thing, that'd be cool. Oh, still pointing out that this is actually not what they were expecting. So this is probably going to be a fairly straightforward match. Archer versus Duck. Rar in a slight advantage. Or, excuse me, Archer versus Archer. My, my bad. Field is going for the Archer as well. This is Archer versus Archer meta because that is what we see with Amphib Factory nowadays. Archer got buffed. They're now everyone, everything everyone uses. And that's about it. I mean, they're not bad. They're just... Because they don't require that they stand in water to do their stuff, they end up doing stuff. And we realize how good they are. And then ducks are also really bad, because they tend to kill each other and kill themselves. It's just very annoying. The, the way the missile friendly fire works with ducks really stretches the limits of where friendly fire in 0k is actually a fun mechanic. It's one of those things that make me wonder, like, is it worth having the whole friendly fire thing? Because the way that ducks end up just being completely nerfed as a result? I don't know. But at any rate, archers are the way people are going when it comes to Ant Factory. Of course, the one thing I'm curious about is if this duck is going to be able to spot the archers. Also, I'm curious, I never really checked when it comes to the actual viewers. If you said if people playing can see the footprints, because right now it looks like there's only one archer going along here. It's the way the footprints are just inside of each other, which I never really thought about before. It's not an uncommon strategy in general, but it's just something you don't see in RTS games, and I wonder if it would actually be relevant. It'd be one of those tiny little things that I doubt would make a huge difference about someone's strategy, but it'd be funny if it did. At any rate, though, the archer's finally engaging with something, managing to get rid of some aspect of the Lotus, maybe? Not really doing all that much damage. I mean, they know their Lotus is there, they know that the entrance into Fieldhouse's base from the south side is protected. The western entrance is also protected, but yeah. Steel Blue pointing out in chat that sand people walk single file to hide their numbers. So, archers are Jawa in suits, confirmed. Still, though, RAR does have a bit of a weaker economy going forward. Fieldtoss put a lot more effort into expanding and a lot less effort into general aggression. While there is some expansion going in from RAR over to the western side of the map, that's where the duck is already hiding. It shouldn't manage to get a whole lot of value... The archer should be able to kill it before the rockets go off and manage to hit the conch, and the conch will survive one rocket volley. So, it's probably fine. But Fieldtoss will know that the expansion's happening in the backyard. While Fieldtoss, on the other hand, has gone for a much more forward expansion, and I totally agree with that. I mean, this is a map where you can kind of protect that off the cliffs, and your opponents, they're going amphib, so they're not going to be going over the cliffs with jumps or spiders. Rar is taking that expansion, however, or the similar analogous expansion on their side, while also not really pushing it around with the archer, surprisingly enough. I'm not sure if they're waiting for something, they're waiting for someone to build up radar along this cliff, or if, or what exactly is going on. I mean, if you check their actual camera control, they seem to be very focused on their backyard, and getting that built up. They're not so focused on those archers that are in the front line, which I find a little bit surprising. Because those archers could have dealt a fair amount of damage trying to stop this expansion from being constructed, and even now could go around there and take out this conch. But at this point, they seem to be just in there for scouting purposes entirely. Not that they can see all that much, but at the very least, it will allow them to see stuff coming out of this little cove. Not really sure that they're going to see all that much, though. And it looks like... There we are. Rar is going in. They will, however, find a little bit of trouble with the boys and archers from Fieldthus. Boys going to be the real problem. Fieldthus, however, has exposed that this is a thing that's happening. The archers not able to deal much damage, seeing as... Well, obviously, they are not able to attack underwater. So, at this point... Not sure what's happening. Not much is happening, really. That's that's what's happening. Nothing! Once I get onto land, it will be a bit of a different story. But yeah, the boys... Not really all that much of a problem. I mean, bear in mind, both sides, they're regenerating in water. 
So this is going to be a bit of a stalemate going forward. And a couple boys coming in from RAR as well. That'll help, but it's really a matter of positioning because none of these units can attack underwater. If we had ducks, that would break the stalemate. This is the one time I'd say, hey, we should have ducks because they can actually attack underwater. But like Grizzly can't attack underwater, and Boy can attack underwater, and Archer can't attack underwater. None of these units can attack underwater. Everything in this army has to be on the surface. But of course, they can all regenerate in water. So yeah, ducks. Ducks would win this. Whoever gets ducks first, and that doesn't seem to be anybody. Field Toss continuing to go for the boy centric strategy. While Rar was going for the Grizzly, that seems to have stalled a little bit. But overall, they are doing what they can to get that Grizzly out, which I'm a bit surprised by. Like, for this fight, at least, it would make a lot more sense to have ducks. They'd win. They wouldn't do much else, but at least they'd get rid of a couple of the boys, and that would eliminate some of the problems that Rar is facing. All right, this one, though, Rar has clearly got to be much more concerned about building up their their power economy, because right now they don't have any... How, like, I really am confused as to where they're focused, because, like I said, they're not building all that much. They have the money with which to build it, but it feels like they're kind of getting confused as to what to build or what to do. And now they have, have some reclaim going, so that at least they will get their energy up. I just find it odd the way that they're playing this out. Although, that being said, they are known as the commander player, and I'm not sure if that's because they aren't really confident. I mean, I thought they were confident in their macro. That's the thing. I was fairly certain that their macro mechanic, their macro understanding was fairly good. They weren't just playing commander only because they didn't know how to actually build an army. They just preferred playing with a commander. But at this point, it does feel like they are not building up their economy, and they haven't really been focusing on it at all. Which I find odd. Given the amount of time they've had, but that's been a constant thing in this game. They've We've seen the economy has been behind Fieldthos, and that allows Fieldthos to build up the air factory as well. They're probably going to Thunderbird and use that to break up any resist resistance that's left. And while the Grizzly is up, that's about it. And again, Grizzly can't attack underwater. So if this is going to be the attack vector, the Grizzly's not going to be able to get much value out of it. Granted, if they attack through the front, which is far less well defended because it hasn't really been poked at all, I could see that being a thing that works. But yeah, I don't really understand where Rar is going with this. They seem to be building up Grizzly, they seem to be going for Mass Grizzly, and trying to just beat down the door with that. Fieldhouse, on the other hand, just has the money. They don't need to worry about Mass Grizzly or anything. They have loads of cash, they can get the Owl, they can get the Thunderbird afterwards. They have all the energy in the world that they need, and Rar, they were relying entirely on Reclaim, they haven't really built a whole lot of power plants since. They built enough that they can at least avoid excessing too much, but still. I just don't understand why they aren't building as many power plants as they could be. Regardless, though, that is going to be that is going to be a grizzly push. That is going to be what RAR tries to do to win this game. Go with the grizzly push and do their best. Now, at this point, excess is not actually that bad overall. But in terms of metal production, metal use more so, there's a 4k difference. Which, surprisingly, is not leading to a major army value difference, but it's important to note that 2,000 of their army value for RAR is this Grizzly. So, there's far less flexibility in RAR's part for moving their army. Like, this is RAR's army. This is it. Or, well, not the not the Owl, obviously. But yeah, this is RAR's army. There might be a couple other units around the map, but that's basically it. All 3,000 metal of it. No, that is entirely it, actually. It's right in front here. That's all the army that exists. Now, granted, the Grizzly can do a lot of damage, but still, there's the Ravens. You'll need about, let's see, 10 of them, 11 of them, to kill the Grizzly in one shot. But they don't care about the Grizzly, they care about the boys. Take out the support troops first, then worry about taking out the Grizzly. That seems to be the strategy, and that is not a bad idea either. So overall, RAR is just working with a really weak economy relative to their opponents and a very, very heavyweight army that is that's not going to really help be helped by the fact that there's all these ravens coming in here killing everything from afar and not really allowing for a lot of counterattack. There's no anglers in play. There's the factory is entirely being used to build up well the scallops now, but it was entirely being used to build up grizzlies. Anglers are on the way, there we go. And actually we are seeing a bit of a lighter army now coming in from Rar, now that they have a couple grizzlies to push forward with. They seem to be a bit more confident in having an army that's better equipped to handle the fact that they're being attacked on multiple fronts, but it's just... Or at least they're fighting on multiple fronts. But the problem is that they're 
not really able to get the value. I mean, at this point, there's a 2,000 metal lead on field toss as far as, as far as economy and army goes. And that's about it. I mean, the Stardust here is trying to do its best, but it's going to go down. It's going to kill one or two boys. That's it. This entire Southwest expansion is dead. And at the same time, the Ravens coming in on the, over the other side. While there are anglers in play, there just isn't enough stuff on Rara's part. They didn't build up enough of an economy early on, and that's leading to having... How many Ravens are here? 14 Ravens. That can one-shot a Grizzly. And then some. And I do also appreciate the way that Field Thoughts went straight for the economy here and just hit all of them in a very intelligent way. Like, that's a great thing to do with your Ravens. If you don't know where the commander is, and even then, oftentimes the commander isn't the best option, just split target among a bunch of economy structures. That can really cripple your opponent, especially now RAR has about a quarter of the economy of Field Thoughts. So, good luck to that, but it looks like Field Thoughts pretty much has this game in the bag. And Rara is going for the airplane plant. I'm guessing on their part again. No, going for Swifts. I was going to say Thunderbird, but they are going for the Swifts instead. And that is going to be an attempt to get rid of the Ravens. I don't really see that working, though. I mean, the Ravens aren't going to be able to stop it, but at the same time, it doesn't matter. The amount of damage that they can do, even with the Swifts being built up, is going to be enough to take out basically anything. And even with the Cobra coming in here, that Cobra is not going to thresher, rather. It's not going to find anything. And with Swift's coming in, again, not going to find much. Rar's commander about to go down, and with that, Rar loses all their storage and a fair chunk of their economy, whatever was left. And really, the Ravens can continue along to the main base and destroy it, and Rar, realizing that, throws in the towel. Field Thus takes it with a convincing opening economy advantage that just led to, well, led to a convincing win. But yeah, Rar just behind at all times. Bit of a shame, that. But this is a macro-oriented game. So, build units or don't win, basically. Anyway, next map is going to, or next match is going to be Steel Blue versus Kingstad on Living Land. So, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple of minutes.